So today we are going to discuss um, and or rather review um, how semantics has played role and how you know th some of the ideas related to semantics have uh, been realized over um, more than a decade uh, of the time. Um, the reason I was motivated to uh, write this blog piece was that um, um, the Google semantic search had already uh, uh, come out and uh, was getting excellent reception. And then I got to you know, think that all the work that we had done um, in 1999 to 2002 time frame. Um, and um, there were some striking similarities. And my purpose is not just to discuss the similarity of Google search, my purpose is also to uh, share with you some common threads uh, related to the role of semantics, how semantics has improved information processing in general, uh, data processing in general. Right? Um, so um, now there is significant um, interest in um, leveraging background knowledge, domain knowledge to improve um, understanding uh, information extraction, understanding of the data, data analysis, data science, things like that. Underlying theme of a lot of things that we do in our group, our lab, our center is the use of background knowledge to complement or improve NLP, which is broadly you know used in data processing, and machine learning, which is extensively used in so many of the systems today. And we are working on some specific um, uh, issues there. Um, more explicitly seeing how these ontologies, knowledge graph, um, you know, change, uh, give us unusual advantage. Um, that pro techniques that purely, they, you know, involve analyzing the data don't give you. Right? So, uh, some very crude, in, you know, analogy or an in, in insight based on something very uh, approximate uh, reason reasoning is like this. Uh, you think about supervised supervised machine learning techniques, and um, here the humans will annotate the data, and the machine, meaning the learning algorithm, learns from this annotated data. Instead, if you were to give knowledge graph or utilize knowledge graph as a complement. You are trying to do something similar. You are just the same. Instead of human giving a, giving guidance to the algorithm through a notation within the context of the classification that is set up by the human, taxonomy by which you are classifying, what you are doing is you are using Typically, human generated knowledge captured in an ontology or knowledge graph, which you know is relevant to the problem domain, problem that you are solving, the domain of, you know, uh, the, of relevance, and uh, you are utilizing that to improve your learning algorithm or to improve your machine learning uh, NLP uh, algorithm, right? So you have additional information that an unsupervised learning would not have it, that any other technique that purely relies on understanding from the data itself would not have it. Okay. So we, one thing that we have done time and again is to figure out how can we 
create or utilize existing knowledge bases that may have been um, created by collective effort. Like Wikipedia is a collective effort. You can use directly Wikipedia in info boxes and search, or you can use a DBpedia version of subset of the knowledge that is in Wikipedia. Or you can use a tool that uses that called Wikipedia Spotlight and use it in your effort, right? You can use UMLS if you're going to um, medical literature. You can, and, and the interesting thing is that this insight was something that um, I had uh, when I founded this company in 1990. Yes, in, la in the last class, I did tell you a little bit about um, the cable set-top box that uh, would what that that had the search for electronic program guides, personal video, and web-based audio video. Okay? So that is that was the origin of that. But then, once we started doing that, um, think about electronic program guide. And think that only in the electronic program guide there is a TV program or there is a movie on TV. So that will be a there will be additional information that you can utilize, let's say genre or rating, TV 14 or for TV or uh, you know R or uh, PG 13 for movie. That is that knowledge. So I can develop more sophisticated system by utilizing already existing classification and knowledge out there rather than simply rely on what I can index onto the um, uh, text that is out there and analyzing text such as uh, electronic program guide. I can ask which are other PG-13 movies that are also comedy because I have the knowledge base that gives me the knowledge about what is PG-13, where does it fit in the classification, what are the genre, and comedy. By using the knowledge, I am able to allow you to ask more intelligent questions, questions more deeper questions, than purely syntactic keyword match questions that typical search engines provided. Or could would provide, right? I'm utilizing type structure. I'm utilizing factual knowledge in conjunction with everything that I would typically do based on a traditional IR technique. That, you know, fundamental basis of search engine is in IR, right? Information retrieval. They have they started with very basic things about spotting the keywords indexing them, right? So indexing techniques, these are all higher part of things. They then developed uh, algorithms for co-occurrences. They have fundamental, uh, you know, aspect of IR, TF, IDF, right? They had, then they started, some of the IR algorithms started using also metadata that came with the documents or humans created it. The thing that we realized way back in 1990s, and in the earlier we already had, had some pieces of that even in the Info Harness and Info Quill projects that I think I started mentioning last year, uh, in the last class. So fundamentally, the uh, work was about developing knowledge bases, or we call it ontology, world model, or knowledge graph these days. They are all related, these, which have schema level information and instance level information, knowledge. Right? I discussed that in last class. And utilize that to improve the um, things like search, but many other things. All, all basically applications uh, or you know of data processing applications, search or browsing or personalization or advertisement or you know targeting, whatever things that you do with the data, uh, or finding a path. These all um, can be improved by using this background knowledge. And background knowledge with the associated techniques 
give you semantic techniques. So knowledge plays fundamental role in empowering semantic techniques. Right? You remember also also recall the um, pyramid I showed you, where um, uh, you know we would have go, we go from this 150 to let's say hypertension and things of that nature. It is impossible, we don't know, I don't know of other good techniques that will allow you to explicitly go from that 150 to hypothyroidism without the use of uh, the ground knowledge. Either you provide it manually or you provide it uh, uh, you know, through use of external knowledge. Manually, by manually I mean Somebody sitting down and doing a notation. That's manual. A lot of you know, early techniques were not um, uh, unsupervised. Right? Supervised is what people did. What has happened, of course, more recently, is that if the data is very rich and comprehensive and not very biased or skewed and very large with extensive coverage, then super unsupervised techniques can do very well. With all those caveats, okay? Um, and even there, the unsupervised techniques simply would not be able to do things that we can do when we also use knowledge bases or ontologies. Another interesting point to notice is that when you do, let's say, classification, the, um, uh, it's a human who comes with the taxonomy, class taxonomy, right? Often, the force spent in developing that class structure or taxonomy that is a reference for classification is a subset of what you can model or what typically you model in a rich ontology or knowledge-based structure, right? Yeah, you put it, often knowledge-based creation is a, um, a group of work or it is an effort where you're mining group work, community work of an entire community to create that data that you're mining. And so you get a lot richness, a lot you know, a richer thing, a lot richer type information richer modeling of relationships. Another very interesting thing to note is that when you, you look at any work in, again, classification, you're classifying it regards to relatively simple taxonomy. And what does a taxonomy, what, what, does, a, what, does, what does that knowledge structure have fundamentally? That knowledge structure has only two things. They have class hierarchy, and class membership. Very, and that also, by the way, is the very basis of, um, you know, uh, some of the most basic knowledge representations. Okay. So when you, uh, when we had um, KL1 kind of structures, these are, you know, KL1 was very um, prominent uh, knowledge representation language. Then, basically, what you had, and these are, and then these are. Because use of today description logics, right? Horn clauses and then description logics, and so um, uh, these had rather simple um, uh, representation. The richness mainly came from the taxonomic representation. Compared that to ontologies that will model arbitrary relationship types, right? and there is a lot more richness with ontologies or knowledge graphs that would model comprehensive relationship types. So, to the extent that you capture the richness of the knowledge and then utilize that richness of knowledge, particularly certainly class membership, certainly class hierarchy, but then going with that rich relationship type and occasionally some constraint information. 
then you can really supercharge your information processing compared to some of these standard techniques that only rely on machine learning, only rely on class taxonomy uh, and you know map pre classifiers to a taxonomy. The world is typically significantly more richer than what typically uh, what you do in a classification problem. So, in, in no doubt it is useful to classify a document into a uh, taxonomy. That's useful, but that usefulness is only as much you, you know is limited to the richness of that model, domain model or taxonomy or classification. For knowledge purposes, right? So, what was interesting here So, uh, here I talk about the video anywhere uh, system Let me, let's see This guy here oh. Why didn't it actually give me that thing? Did the, oh there it is Download is as we see, see here. Uh, what happened here? Do you know what uh, happened, uh, Chapter? Because I'm giving this link, so I should have PDF. Why am I getting this web page? Uh, can you search for the title? See if it shows up. Yeah, that I could, but the question is, it should work. So this is the video anywhere system, which was a precursor to the what we developed. Um, so this is what was licensed by um, Tali when I founded Tali in 1999. And uh, this is. Um, So you can see electronic program guide, uh, you know, DVD and, you know, maybe hard disk and you want write that, right? And you are uh, indexing all of those things. Um, and this is a, there's a content agent. Uh, that same idea went on to the Tali thing. And um, here is a, um, an ontology or a model of the assets, the kind of, um, uh, information we are categorizing, but there was not very deep ontology or there wasn't much of uh, data that was simply used for uh, more comprehensive modeling of uh, the data that we were indexing. Basically. So that is video anywhere. Let me go back. And then um, came, you know, so here I've described a few things. So. In year 2000, I filed for this, we filed for this patent, right? Uh, the first patent semantic web. And this picture comes from that patent, right? So, notice the title. System and method for creating a semantic web and its application in browsing, searching, profiling, personalizing, and referring. Pretty comprehensive. Right? Clearly, it talks about... Hmm? Personalization at that time. Yes. So, uh, in our system, um, we would uh, allow, we would model a user interest, and the system will automatically create your landing page that um, uh, has your own um, uh, content uh, that are semantically related to what you are interested in. Uh, because you can do semantic search, uh, then it's very easy for us to essentially search based on your personalization, personal interest. Will that be related? Like, was that related? Like similar to cookies that we have in this like, browser? No. Uh, cookies, here you have explicitly uh, you know, model what you are interested in. Uh, for example, so you see recent work on Pawan on uh, semantic filtering mm -hmm. and uh, he created a um, uh, user uh, hierarchy, uh, a, a hierarchy, what is it called? User, user interest graph. Remember that? So um, his work is on automatically creating user interest graph. In our case, we we allowed you to manually create your user interest graph, basically. But then you'll automatically find the content 
um, that is of interest to you. Um, today, you will find analogy to some level with things like Flipboard, things like um, um, Pocket. Mm. Uh, the distinction is, even today, Pocket doesn't uh, exploit explicit knowledge. It only exploits a machine learning and essentially you know, pure data centric techniques. So we are in that sense, but um, in some cases, if you, you know, when you use Google News, it will tell you, are you interested in Galaxy? Are you interested in Narendra Modi? So that is what is happening. You are actually, um, you know, telling the system you are interested in that concept, that entity rather. Underlying, either they have keyword or entity match. Right? I am assuming that there is an entity. Earlier it was just keyword, but now it is entity. Google has moved on to the entity centric world. And there is a, um, there is basically, long time ago I have talked about this, but I, you know, but I have seen that happen in the real world. Keyword or, you know, um, a stream followed by entities or concepts or things, as I mean, single would, uh, you know, mention, but it's the same as entity, followed by relationships followed by models, comp comprehensive model like uh, in, in events. So that is the direction in which you are making the systems more semantic and more intelligent. Right? Let me give you one interesting um, um, point to think about. Um, Think about your day. During the day, you've been exposed to a lot of data. In terms of speech you have heard as data, things you have viewed, papers you have read, news items you have read. Okay? But if you try to recall what you did, you're most likely trying to going to recall that things based on events. Because our brains are well attuned to, um, our brain does not have problem that machines have with respect to complex representation, multi-tier abstractions. The, in our previous class, we talked about the abstraction, right, quite a bit. Computing system doesn't, computer system today doesn't do the abstractions very well. As in the last class we talked about in particular the perception, perceptual computing, right? That is, that is hard. Yes, there is perception object and there are video perceptual system that, you know, for video for example and they try to recognize objects from that. That's a lot of work. But our brain is very good at that. So, Machines are going, computing systems are slowly going from strings and keywords to things. Now that's what Google is mostly achieved. And Google has not yet achieved the relationship very well. It is aware of it, but much of the relationship aware of it is co-occurrence kind of relationship. It's not aware of the semantic relationship as in a person works for a company person owns stock in that company. The semantics of the two relationships are extremely different. And our, our brain is very good at understanding that. But most of the computational techniques are simply going to say, oh, you know, Amit Shah, his name comes up very often in, in the context of right State University. But then they you know, they, would, they can work hard and try to recognize that I am um, um, a Rice State University employee. But which one would be more meaningful? I am an employee or I am a professor here? That requires context. It can be in that context. For, you know, for, for the accounting system, it really doesn't matter whether I am a professor or not. And for academic system, probably it matters that I'm more of a professor and, and not an employee. You, know, you don't think of me as an employee, you think of me as a professor or teacher. So, um, that 
if we do deal with abstraction and complex representation, we are consciously working, you know, to make our systems, you know, making our information systems intelligent is slightly one key aspect of that is simply to move towards more complex representation. You look at what happened during your trip to your homeland or your family. You will think of any of events. You are not going to think about I did this, this. No, only a few things that would stand out. Of all the data that you were exposed to, something that potentially evoked stronger emotion is what you are likely to remember the most. Now think about it. Now we are going well beyond even just the event, but the events with subjectivity, which is what led your brain to put in extra effort to memorize it or to, you know, and, and remember that. Right? No, you know, stopping the digression for the time being and coming back to what we are discussing here, we recognize that by infusing knowledge in processing, what we are doing, in this case web search, but anything else, there will be a lot of, we will be a lot of applications. Right? We could make a smarter system than what others used to. So you can see here, um, so in the last class I um, recommended that you understand, you read the pattern, right? So who wants to review the pattern, uh, you know, at least high level uh, summary of the pattern. Manas? Did you look at this or not? Uh, I did look at the pattern, but I uh, looked at the text under it, like uh, the word item or something. What, you looked at this? Uh, not the pattern. Exactly. This is the pattern. Uh, the explanation under the photo and the main page. You looked at the expressions under the photo. I mean, uh, this. Like, uh, the text. Mm, the, uh, the, the block. The, the block. Um, yeah, the block. Oh, like, uh, yeah. No, no, but I, I, this is what I want you to, I wanted to look at, right? Because, remember, what, what, did I tell, what did I say in the last class? Why you should know how to write patterns? So when we go to one time step, so we can be able to contribute. Yes. I, did I say it right or wrong? Is that a, yes. uh, then did you read the pattern or not? <laughs> I don't trust Why not? Um, I will, I will. I have a yes. question. Like I just gone through once uh, like overview of this abstract and summary of this thing. There in one place you mentioned that uh, the patent was about uh, extracting the domain and subject specific metadata mm -hmm. of a video or means digital media. Mm -hmm. So suppose there is like you were telling about the video and all it came up and so what kind of metadata you extracted here is here is what I can show you so uh, let's look at this here is um, a web page and uh, you know business uh, uh, here, here, here happens to be some some web page okay part of it and this web page was at uh, CBC News dot cb uh, cbc dot ca okay and there is some text right so what we did let me see if i can bring up the extraction technique uh, with the work on extraction that we did then no this is uh, not the i think in terms of today's uh, applications this was uh, kind of a mashup right Huh? This was like a kind of a mashup where you infused multiple data sources from. Yeah, we were. Uh, but let me uh, show you the. Okay, here, here is what I'll show you simple, some examples. So, uh, this is a web page. And um, you have to do a lot of work of syntactic in nature because. 
there is some advertisement here, you are not interested in that. And there's a lot of other things that maybe is not interesting. You're only interested in this part here. However, there is additional metadata. This tells me that this is part of Europe and there is a URL. So if you see here, structure of the web page and within this thing. So I know, first of all, that this is a BBC news page. And so it's a news and typically, um, there are two ways the news are categorized by region and by uh, you know uh, things like entertainment, sports, business. Both ways the news are categorized. That's already there, so I extract that. Or what I do is to take this text and feed into our system and do automatic classification. So let me show you that example here. There's another, um, oh yeah. So uh, here I have a, web, uh, a, a document or web page, you see here. And I feed into my system and my system has all the classes and I do automatic classification. So this says base wall, this is base wall. Then what I extract for this page are only rather or only the things that are uh, relevant to that particular domain. So, sports person or 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 where the games are played or um, a team name. These are all relevant to or the um, game location like uh, you're playing it at Wrigley, uh, uh, you know, uh, park or Ohio State Stadium. Those are all relevant to that particular domain. Raider, Raiders Hall or whatever, that will be for baseball, for, for basketball, for right side, that will be relevant, right? Our knowledge base, so this is, so what had happened was, so what would we do is that we would, um, let me go to other page. So see, this is one of the pictures from the uh, pattern. So it shows our modeling of the domains. News has said, this is what we apply, that this model is what would be applied to understand that um, uh, news that I showed you. But there is here base basketball uh, uh, or baseball, so whatever that was, um, the model, appropriate model would be applied for that content. So one of the things we did was to automatically classify whatever content that came into to this. Right. Now I want to though tell you one very important thing in terms of automatic classification. So one of the things that you should have read in this here, I think there should be a link to uh, paper 2000 and BC. So there is a link here to this page. Is it similar to the maximum? There is semantic enhancement in it. Okay, so this describes what happened inside. And I expect you to read this paper. I'll come to this, you know, some of these things later. But I want to show you one interesting little part there. So um, 
we use these eight or nine different classifiers. And so there are Bayesian classifiers, HMM models and classifiers, and then here you see there's a knowledge base. What was this knowledge base classifier? The knowledge base classifier was, you see that uh, we have this, you know, uh, baseball, basketball, you see. Each of them had fully, you know, the knowledge. So, for example, um, you know NLB, right? National uh, Base uh, uh, Baseball uh, base League. Yeah. Or in football, you have NFL, right? NFL.com has um, pages for all the teams of NFL. And one of the pages would list all the roster. Meaning, what, let's say, At Atlanta, you know, so, so, uh, what do you call, uh, let's say, Brown. Cleveland, you know, Cincinnati Brown, right? Reds. Huh? Reds. Reds. Uh, and uh, Browns are from? Browns is a team also. And uh, Chicago Cubs, right? Then, all the players and what position they play, all of that is there, right? We would have run an extractor, we call knowledge extractor, I'll show you shortly. And we would have added, extracted the fact and put it into a knowledge base. So, we would know that that person is a football player, he plays at this, for this team, at this position, if that's relevant, whatever those things are. Instead of relying on annotating data. How would you do that? I mean, that's annotating data would be manually everybody and somebody knowing that. No. Instead, this is much faster and much better. It's already outperforming so many of them. So you can see that our knowledge base classifier outperforms all the rest. Mm -hmm. In the context of web based search, because what is this? This is web search. It used for web browsing, all the things in the title of the patent. It used for all of this. To my knowledge, this is the first system that ever used knowledge base. Remember, we built this in year 9, 2000. This work was going in 2000, published in 2002. But because I was a company, I did not immediately publish the work. That's fine. What, whether you take 2000, 2002. Where was the, uh, where was the web search? Then, you still had Yahoo search, you still had Altavista search, you still had, um, uh, you know, and of course you had Google, yet none of them used any knowledge. Why? Okay, it's a very interesting thing. Tell me, if you read this, you should know why. Did you read it? They retrieve the result based on the string. Huh? They retrieve the result based on the string approach. Yes, they did, but uh, I'm saying why I know for sure that Google did not, um, um, uh, um, uh, you know, use knowledge base. Come on, guys, you're not, you're not reading this. Because, um, just the searches, they just focus on the breadth of the... No. Is it because of the chicken? No. Go on. Did you read this? Did you read the whole uh, plot? I read it a uh, long time ago. <laughs> not good. Not enough. No, you're not making the best out of it. Did you read it? Then I was referring to the lengths. Then you should know this. Point is, well, I don't care when you read it. Did you know? Do you know? You don't, don't remember. Sanjay, you ready? Can we guess the answer? Huh? Can we guess the answer? I will give the answer, but did you read no, this? Can we guess? Can we say that? Maybe? No, you can, you, uh, we can guess, but you will not be able to, uh, you will not get guess the correct answer. Guess from the same thing. No. Did anybody look at this? We are using semantic search. Did anybody look at this? Yes. 
Remember, I, 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 I asked you to read every link. Did you read this? In the link in the beginning, uh, they said that uh, why, uh, I mean, how much we've done and how, what's, what's working and what's not. Uh, I don't remember exactly who uh, the page was from. There, they were like, uh, during the 2000s, the community was split between, like, uh, should we continue with RDF or should we switch to link data? And, uh, you know, there was so much confusion in the community. So that nobody yes, but there is nothing to do with what I'm saying here. I'm here talking about... Uh, what tells, what makes, why I can conclusively say, say that in year 2000 or 2002, when we use this knowledge base, I showed you how we use knowledge base. That paper shows you the use of knowledge, you know, base classifier. And there's a lot more we did with the knowledge base. I'll show you that. That Google did not do that. How do I know conclusively? Who is Peter Norby? He was the head of machine learning. He is, uh, you know, uh, in Google. He is the author of very well-known book on machine learning, right? And what did he say? What did he say? Did you read this blog? That the lack of RDF in our files, and there were multiple ontologies. Okay. Did you read my response to that? This is my response. Right? So you have to read Peter Norwich's blog and then you have to this is you know Peter Norwich's blog and then you have to read my response to that. This is it. Right? And we have already done what I am showing you. The slide that I was showing, uh, that the, the slides that I am showing you, these slides are from uh, 2000, 2000 to 2002 time frame. Right? And this is also, this was, the, so we already used the knowledge base. You see in this uh, picture here, this world model. And also in the text, you will see the world model is the same as ontology. Already use a knowledge base, right? Now what did, and what did Google did in, you know, 2013, right? In the last class I shared, I, I, I shared with you, Google acquired MetaWeb, which had created free base and started building Google Knowledge Graph. And then, Google started having that info box, right? Um, so we'll have to, uh, you know, we'll have you taking this class. You'll have to uh, actually read this, which you're not basically every link of it and understand, and then. Bring that understanding. Otherwise, the whole purpose of this class is not there. Okay. This is critical. If you're going to understand it, you're going to do it. You know, so you're coming unprepared in the class. That's not acceptable. That was a prime requirement. Okay. Um, so. Who wants to summarize uh, this, um, you know, article? Just saying that, you know, the traditional search engines, they just now either uh, go to the depth of the, uh, you know, like the tags and they're not at the depth of the article or, you know, just focus in one part of the thing or just, you know, rank up. Uh, Search in a broad sense, but not really with uh, meaning. And uh, the engine and Tali uh, overcomes both those uh, disadvantages by using intelligent bots uh, to actually find the relevant information. Right. So what happens underneath in this bot, right? So to get a sense, 
um, every page that you have so let me show you look at this picture which I had showed last time right? so any search engine basically would go to a web page or whatever that you know they basically there is a part of the search engine that um, essentially simply gathers URLs okay crawler uh, actually there is a sophisticated things about saying of all the billions of pages how do you actually crawl in what order so one of the interesting thing that Google did earlier before other search engine did was to come up with um, frequency by which you can decide uh, how often to crawl a page based on how often the page seems to be changed you you know I'm just saying something very crudely you visit the pages look at data you didn't see any change no, you wrote down there is no change when you when you visited after one month so next time decide to visit only after three months you visit the pages in one month it was changed and it was substantially changed versus likely change visit the page that was substantially changed more often let's say every week and the likely change page let's say uh, continue to one month the same frequency or two weeks you see what I'm saying so you can develop some strategy to decide what are you know which content is fresh and which content is um, static and if the content is expected to be static you can also know by technology use if you see that the page was hand created, the chance it will be create uh, change is less compared to page that are automatically created from database rendering. My knowledge base that you are creating, right, uh, from an NFL website and the difference between it and the news page where it changes every day. So I think in the system before that you built, it, it actually uh, visits a knowledge base web page only once maybe gives the information that's it but for the news it has to repeatedly going and crawling the data from there right so uh, although even the news so you know so uh, when we were running this system um, CNN website used to be updated roughly three times a day and we had heuristically uh, sorry empirically figured out when they do that and then you will visit at the time soon after they would have updated the website so our content is always uh, fresh but so nowadays you can just you know subscribe to the RSS feed of those websites they weren't there those days I, I know okay. but I mean, no. um, and um, uh, so when I gave the demo in 1999 to Venture Capital in, in, in you know in uh, Palo Alto you know my PC was in Palo Alto I did a side-by-side -side demo of uh, latest news on Google searching for that news and on Dali's thing. Google did not find it, we found it. So that is what sold the VC saying clearly these guys have something in the they probably did not sell semantics or anything of that nature. Okay, so this is yes there is a value to that that's funny this company. But the question is still missing the uh, the ability for us to follow for example a person on the news. Like I want to read all all articles that is mentioning, for example, Donald Trump. Hmm. Right? Still not there. Right? What Can you? Not there? Oh, in this case, we do because, because we do not we already have, would have Donald Trump as an you know uh, entity called you know businessman and politician. No, I know that in this world, but I mean now accessible for people as a commercial product that can, they can actually use, like in Google News or so on. They do not actually extract entities and then track them, like where everywhere they are not tracking them. They do now extract entity, right? So Google does ex Google does seem to understand is Donald Trump a person? Yeah, but are they doing like um, extract like linking each no. article to that entity? No, no, no they don't. Is... That's where to do that is where they will have to move to the relationship support and then event support. Yeah. See, this exactly. is. What I was preparing that this is where they will come. They, you know, that's that's their intention. Their clearly intention, they, they clearly intend to support relationship, but they are having problem uh, in understanding how to model relationship, which is important. And then how do you even identify relationship? How do you automatically identify relationship in text? 
So you know, restroom extraction is a hard work uh, and still you know, undergoing research. And so um, yeah, I'm sure that people in Google is working as we are working on this kind of issue. Now, in our case though, uh, uh, you see we already have relationship. You see here, relationship compete with. But the relationship compete with, competes with did not come from data, it came from knowledge base. Because we mined, our knowledge, knowledge agent went to a business site which had listed all the companies and their competitors. So we are applying externally, uh, you know, separately extracted knowledge in improving the data processing or content processing of the data processing. Of course, it would be also nice to extract the relationship directly from here too. For some of you, you might have seen the demo of our software called Schooner, which had this trailblazing. You can go start with the concept and then say, how are the other documents related by, with this concept in this context? You, see, you can look at drug and then say, show me the documents that discuss the side effect of this drug. It will take you to other documents that show side effect where there is a triple which discusses this drug having side effect of some other kind. And then you can you, you will see this is a side effect for this drug and you can browse through that and learn, you know, understand what you know, the new data with relationship browsing. Okay. So, how does uh, the crawler uh, you know, find that this company competes with the other? So, you said it has to go through another page or another kind of search where uh, the companies are listed in uh, competitive order or something. What if it's not there? Like you. Yeah. So let us let's let's get a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, understand that uh, there exists a uh, knowledge base. You know, and the schema of the knowledge base is designed by human. So we had a graphical um, uh, schema builder that will allow you to design knowledge graph. We call knowledge graph uh, schema. Okay? So I would say that in the baseball or basketball, the concept of team, team member, play, you know, what locations people may play at, like forward guard, or whatever those things are, right? I would have all that stuff. Then, let us look at the architecture of the system. This is the architecture of the system. So the system has three components. This is ontology here and the ways, first of all, as I mentioned, the schema of this is designed by hand. What knowledge I am interested in? Basically it says what knowledge I am interested in. But it's just a schema, so for humans to design it's not too hard. Plus it is also a, a human decision of what is important and what is marginal. If it's marginal, I don't want to spend so much time to process the data to understand those entities in relationship. Right? So that's important. Then what we do is to have this what is called as knowledge extractors. Knowledge extractors are specialized for extracting structured data that contain, uh, uh, you know, when we, that, that are uh, or semi-structured data, both. How? Uh, in some cases, we had access to um, web pages that were automatically created from database. Okay. So suppose there is a profile of a stock and that they have a database about a stock and the stock is let's say Microsoft and then it says competes with in those days Microsoft used to compete with let's say Hewlett Packard. Right? So on that web page uh, that information will come up typically as a table and our extractors would use regular expression and other things to essentially read that uh, semi-structured data represented as unstructured data or structured data represented as unstructured data is a web page which have embedded tags which will allow me to um, uh, understand what content is what and then uh, write a row in the knowledge base about stock. So I would have a, let's say that this is not a source which is nasdaq.com. Nasdaq is a 
uh, one of the three stock exchanges in the US. NASDAQ uh, and uh, NYSE, New York Stock Exchange, and Omega Stock Exchange. These are three public uh, you know, exchanges. Right? Now, we would go to NASDAQ, and there will be a list of all the publicly traded um, you know, stocks on NASDAQ. So we will need that list. Other thing we would do is that every day we will see for changes to that. So there will be a place on some page saying stocks delisted, stock li new, new, st new stock listed. Every day stock will be delisted. delisted. So we will pick that up and we will update saying what are today, uh, you know, what are these stocks being traded today on that stock exchange. Then we will go to the individual page for the stock and there will be some information about the stock. We also went to another uh, website called hoover.com and um, another one called, um, um, uh, and today there is a, you know, a big financial uh, information provider called Factiva. Okay? Let me give you actually an analogy that you will understand much better. Today there is a website called um, uh, Music Brains. So this is a music brains. Here the data is available under open licenses. And this has a catalog of more than 600,000 artists. And for each artist, it has information on every disc or album that that artist has. It has other details like possibly genre and many other things of that nature. So here you can see the middle there. There is some I don't know exactly right now, uh, you know, and so I, you know, what genre is each um, album and so on and so forth. So you can see the title, artist, all this kind of stuff, right? And there's a lot of better data that you have to go around. So for my music search, I would have already extracted this database and made it part of my music knowledge base. But how did you capture the concepts and the alphabet? You manually created them? The schema was manually created. Manually created. Using a graphical tool. Because you know the manas and the scientists, they are trying to do it automatically now. For Hazatsis, right? For the event extraction. Yeah, but schema, you know, what, what, what kind of information is interesting? Why would you, how can you do that automatically? You, you have to say, I'm interested in this data or that data. You have to say, I'm interested in a sports person. Yeah, I know, yes. but that, that's the that's question that they are investigating now, right? No, I mean, I mean, Google Knowledge Graph itself, the data itself is not made, uh, automatically created. Mm. The tools, in our case, we are, you know, we are probably even ahead in that we leverage the content like this from different sites. We can either download the database or we can simply extract from this page, we know what is this, that's the title, we know that is the artist, we know the you know length of the things, we would know from somewhere else what uh, um, you know uh, for the whole um, you know genre for this particular artist is, that, uh, or this particular album, one art, sometimes some artists uh, play you know belong to more than one genre, they have you know both uh, reggae and jazz, right, so you know, what this particular uh, you know album is about, well, you have to do that, right? So, um, um, so here it is, mixed state or street, okay. Um, Maybe you can search, if you know an album, search. No, you can, uh, I'm uh, uh, more interested in other metadata, like genre and all that, right? 
But anyway, that's what we'll, we'll have all of that, right? That is used for improving the classification, that is used for spotting the entities, and that is used for instantiating the relationships. All this was, you know. So, here I would go. The other thing is that we had um, the whole infrastructure was scheduling this knowledge agent. So, um, if you are talking about, let's say, a game like uh, uh, like football, uh, then typically um, the football team is roster is designed once a year, with sometimes mid-season change, one or two players may be added or somebody is injured. So, we will run that extractor only. Uh, once uh, um, before the season starts and once during the season. That's it. But with the NASDAQ, we will run it every day to look at the changes in stock. So that whole infrastructure was built here to keep this on road here today. Right? One very specific example was that uh, these extractors were running before the 2000 election. So before, uh, uh, you know, 20th of January 2001, when the new uh, president took, uh, you know, Clinton, Clinton's, uh, you know, presidency ended and Bush's presidency began. Laura Bush became, you know, Hillary Clinton until then was first lady. That's an official uh, position, political office. So we have modeled that in political, you know, uh, office. And that uh, Laura Bush became the first lady. So now, if I am looking at the page that was dated before that date, first of all, we have to represent knowledge saying, before this date, this is the knowledge, for, and after that, this is the knowledge for that same office. And then, when we look at the web page, if it is dated, if you know that it is dated before this thing, then we will say, Hillary Clinton and in the role of first lady. Otherwise, it's Bush, and Hillary Clinton would not be seen as first lady. So there was all that knowledge thing and, and temporal aspects that were also built in here. This is the automatic classification which I showed you, right? I showed you that baseball thing, and this is the entity extraction and enhanced entity extraction. So let me show you entity extraction is I showed you the sports person extraction. Let me show you enhanced entity extraction. So here, uh, here is a simple example. This is the web page, and here see these are all the metadata being extracted from the page. There are syntactic, structural, and semantic metadata here. Right? So syntactic metadata like clip length, two thirty seconds. But then there is location here, and here if you see, this will not say just simply, this will not say. Uh, this will say uh, Belgrade, but it will not say Yugoslavia and Europe. But uh, we have additional knowledge base uh, of geographical knowledge base, political geography knowledge base, which will have all the knowledge about you know uh, all the major cities in every country and so on and so forth. So when we come across Belgrade and it is within the Europe here, then we will say Belgrade, Yugoslavia, Europe. That way, if you say, give me the latest news from Yugoslavia, even though this page did not mention Yugoslavia, I can give you the, this story. It is related to Yugoslavia, even though it mentions Belgrade. A keyword search won't get that. Right? And many such things that would happen. For example, you would have uh, Kostunika, he is a guy, politician. Well, what is his role? Is he president, prime minister, whatever? That will be knowledge enhancement, right? So that is what. Happened here. Here it shows that we process variety of content. So for example, 
uh, you would have um, um, you know both push and pull content. So we'll have crawler going to a web page like the one I just showed you, that BBC News page, or we would have uh, sources where they will send us the content. So let me see if this is here. Okay, yeah, here. So here you see, you see in context, this content came from a source. This is aggregator of ninety-five different news sources, like South Africa News Agency or Korean News Agency or AP, AP News or whatever. So there it will be content that will be accessible on the server and it will be pushed to us while if you are looking at a website like CBS Market Watch or CNBC that is the pull content a crawler goes there and we pull the content from there in other case the content is being pushed right. now you can look at the power of um, uh, this is a form of search actually just an integrator of search and browsing now look at the power, which you can even not found. You cannot find this power even today in, in anything like Google or any other system. So I'm looking at a stock, and here you see company news, analysis news, earning news. So I only classify the news according to the type it is, right? And not just you know about that. I know what type of news it is. But here is the powerful thing: industry and competition news. So my, because I have a knowledge base that says who is the competitor of this company and then I am able to give you the news. I have knowledge base that says this company is a telecommunication company and hence or, or you know semiconductor company in those days. So then I will give you news from other companies that are semiconductor news or semiconductor new industry news. I will give you that. And then we, I will link to the specific web pages that directly land on Motorola cash flow page. And these are real time data coming from third party. So you can see search, classification, browsing. Here is a very powerful, let me see if I can, example of what is happening here. So here is a page and it says Islamic Jihad group led by which is relationship Dr. Aman al Zawahiri. We understood that entity and we have knowledge base that says that Al Jihad is same as Islamic Jihad group. So there is semantic association. And then we have, uh, uh, you know, see I'm an al Zawari, but here doctor, that is there. And you can jump between this thing to that thing because knowledge base allows you to link things from between the different uh, sources. But this is more powerful. So we call it uh, semantic, blended semantic browsing and querying. So, uh, when you look at this, anything like that, so here, this is what we have in our knowledge base or part of what we only have in knowledge base. This is similar to what you have in Google Knowledge Graph, let's say, theoretically. Here is the classification, uh, an aliases, organization, alias and all that. Then I can search. So, I can search now on any of these things and it will, I can give you, give you all the search results here then I can say show me metadata for this compare this with Google's information box that you get today which is often just the Wikipedia dump here it is on the fly created thing from different sources and, in, and what we have already in the knowledge base And from there on, you can go to a story which takes you back. Or you can use a form, semantic form. These are the properties, uh, you know, uh, that you can provide. 
and say, oh, give me location, COVID, Kuwait related news. Or give me the news, uh, you know, and if the system is smart enough to look at all the city within a country, if you want, and then give you all the news within that country, not just um, news that mention the country. That is what semantics is about. If somebody asks you, give me a news about Ohio, well, if, if you know that this is news about Dayton, well, you know Dayton is in Ohio, you, you know, you're going to associate it with Ohio, right? That is what the semantics is about, that's what many search engines don't have, right? So, um, um, let's look at this. Uh, in this particular case, um, uh, we had a default keyword search box, like any search engine has. But we also had a facilitated search or attribute based search. So for music, song, artists, these are all coming from our knowledge key based schema. But I, if I change this to, let's say, um, um, movie, then I will have different properties or attributes of SX. Right? If I type Moderna here, see if it's an artist, I'm only going to get Moderna's, um, uh, you know, profile, you know, what you call rich media reference. I'll come to this. Uh, I'll only get this Moderna search on Moderna's, uh, you know, uh, music related thing. But if I took um, uh, um, uh, movie and I type Moderna here, I would get Avita, a movie in which Moderna was an actress, actor. And if I say undefined and just say Moderna here, I'll give you give you all. Just like any search engine would do. These were ranked based on the context with sub rank by time, fresh. So if it was a property match, they would rank high. If it was keyword match, they would rank low. Then any item will give you all kinds of what we call as rich media reference. Compare this with Google's info box today. So here I would have description. These are all automatically created metadata. Remember the metadata I showed you when we extracted from that BBC news page? Some of them are displayed here. Again, it's customizable. And then here is interactive merchandise, you know, marketing. I don't you know, uh, that we have, uh, you know, in the pattern we had advertisement. So I can take you directly to buying the discography, to buying this particular thing from a different website. That happens, right? They, many websites do that. But you're talking about 2000. This picture was presented in the very first keynote of Semantic Web. In Portugal, I think in September 2, year 2000. Right? So, um, So this is that, you know, you know. This is the most cited article, um, you know, on semantic web. And there is a copy of this available. Um, you know, this is where Tim Berners-Lee, uh, Odala Silla and uh, uh, Jim Handler or Odala Silla has this article, right? So this is, you know, uh, often most cited. The point that I make in this here is that, and this is something you need to understand if you're going to know about semantic web, is 
what is the vision of semantic web that Bernus Lee or uh, Handler had? And um, what is the vision that was of semantic web that was in my patent and these other things that I just talked about in the same time frame? And now look at the vision of semantic web as it has survived. Look at how semantics is used by Google Semantic Search. You look at how semantics is used in uh, IBM's Watson and Watson Health. And what you will find is uh, that it's very close to the way I describe semantic web, not at all close to the way the scientific American article is. Just this month though, uh, there is a revision of this, uh, you know, uh, semantic web revisited that uh, Henry is a co-author again, um, has uh, come up. I am yet to read the articles, but I am curious. And I want you to do that and tell me what you find. So uh, here is a homework for each of you. I would you like you to write about a page or longer of uh, comparing the uh, uh, two visions of semantic web or, or different visions of semantic web. You decide whether it's two or multiple. And the minimum sources that you have to ex exploit is this blog and citations here, including the kind of exchanges I had with Peter Norwick indirectly. The, this particular, um, you know, 2001 article by Berners Lee and company, and the revision article that just came out. So please look at all of these things and write a Google Doc, use Google Doc, and write your um, uh, page and uh, I will ask um, uh, you to, you know, I'll, I'll put a post in our community and you're going to put a link as a comment. Uh, so I'll see, you know, uh, and, and your link should be there before the next class. Okay. Now since you did not read this thing yet, I want you to read it and come ready for discussion in the next class. So you're going to unfortunately spend one more class on this thing, make sure that you got this thing right. Okay. So, some of you had read it many months ago and thought you remember, we don't remember as much. Others have not read it uh, sufficiently. <coughs> Only one person that has impressed me with uh, attempt uh, to read more, you know, some something is this gentleman, who is only uh, reading the course, or just sitting in the other. Okay, so you have to find time and read. And um, if you don't understand that, then you know you don't expect to get good grade either. So even for that purpose, you have to understand. There is a lot more by the way, this, uh, which is, we didn't complete um, everything here. Uh, Dr. Sir, yeah. I have a question. Like in the previous snapshot you showed that if you choose that uh, from the drop down, if you select music, it will populate relevant information, if you select movie. So you had some kind of uh, schema? Yes, that exactly. Based on that, it will populate that kind of data? Exactly. The schema is this, right? Uh, if the schema is uh, already, uh, let's look at this. Um, this, this is a schema. Um, so, so this is the highest level, right? This is any asset at this highest level, this is the next level, and then you click on this and it will show you all the properties, uh, all the um, entity, uh, what are classes, mm -hmm. and then you will see all the properties within the classes and so on and so forth. Okay. So that is the schema. And there you are, um, um, you know, basically looking at, uh, you can say music, here, uh, entertainment, in that there is music, movie, everything. In the music, so that search was only for uh, entertainment. But you can, uh, so let me show you this diagram here. See here, this is actually the whole schema and you can go to whatever level you want. So here you have gone to uh, a movie, right there is movie. So if you click on movie, it will give you movie related to search for. 
But remember, you also have, you can just go here and just type keyword. <laughs> then you'll get everything. But then you will get, if you do that, the interesting thing was that you will be able to, uh, you can type, you type any keyword. So you are you type uh, David Dua, but my system because you look at knowledge base and you know David Dua is a golfer, it automatically system recognizes entity and category, and automatically uses that. So players, top five players, attribute of golf. This is all customizable. Just like. And within that, these are all the various David, new, you know, news relating David Dual as a golf player. Mm -hmm. But if you if you uh, typed in Robert Dual, who is an uh, who is an actor, then it's going to you know here you see enter a movie, you're going to see movie related stuff. So you're already using the context to customize the results. What's the speed of uh, getting a result compared to a normal like a Google search search of the, uh, the speed of this this kind of search where you have to like basically mine more data or make more associations? I don't think this is a very important question. I don't think this is a very um, what you call this is an apple and orange kind of question. See, the thing is that Google does not run on one computer. Google runs on literally hundreds of thousands, if not million computers. Long, long, long time ago, I knew Google had 10,000 computers on which they index, you know, they were using just for the search. Mm -hmm. Now, lot more, right? So that's one thing. So partly it will relate to how much infrastructure you deploy. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the efficiency of your algorithm and your activity, you are going to need very powerful machines depending on how many users there are, how much data there is and so on. The amount of data that you have to index is so much more. So suppose you consider that a um, web page, just purely text web page is a kilobyte. The amount of metadata is more than that. With all the indexing data. The amount of metadata with semantic data, metadata in addition to all the indexing data, is even more than that. So clearly, my you know this system would require more storage than a non-semantic search. Computation will also be, and which is where you why I think you asked the question and a legitimate question in that sense, will be more here because. In addition to all the data that is already indexed, instead of just index hookup, I have to look at the knowledge base to see what assertion that, that can be, can, I can make and get additional metadata. Hillary Clinton is a first lady or not is something I might have to look it up by looking at traversing a relationship or foreign key in a, in a, in a relation table. Right? So obviously that's going to slow down with more things, right? That said, this process that I showed you in terms of um, you know this you know this, this semantic this this process here, where we are uh, uh, you know taking a web page and classifying and um, extracting all the metadata, we used to do one million pages per server in those days. Uh, in those days, I'm talking about 2001-2002 time. Frame. In those cases, we were, we are running on Pentium 5 computers, which are far, far small, you know, slower than now. So servers had Pentium, basically, you know, chips that were mostly Pentium 5. And our, uh, you know, 4 gigabyte was the largest configuration we had, but typically it would be 1 or 2 gigabyte memory, totally on the server, R2 server in those days. So it was fairly efficient, I would say. 1 million pages per hour per server. Um, and that's how in your scale you go to. So we also had a data center. It was not running on a simple computer or you know desktop or a single server. We had a rack. We had uh, three racks of servers at one point of time, and then 
these Rexos servers were in the data center, you know, at the level three, you know, high, you know, with all the backups and this and that, the redundancies and everything. So it was stored in a, you know, for when we when, when we are running as a sort of web search engine. But we limited our size extensive uh, very much by focusing on audio video. There is no technological limitation to do that. It's just a business decision and the decision to scale. Because as I mentioned, you know, we took 2.54 million dollar you know series A. Google took 25 million dollar series A. So we had you know you know we had to make those choices. And we could have grown had the you know internet Nasdaq probably not burst. Internet bubble was right happened in April 2000. So that's why we became enterprise company rather than that. So this technology is deployed in uh, extensively in um, so uh, so this is uh, for example uh, let's see if this page shows up. Why is it so slow? This is very slow. But so so these are all the news items. So the, my my company the name had changed to see magics. And uh, uh, it, uh, we had this uh, money, uh, know your customer, and that kind of uh, thing. So that's where it got. That is one of the things that we got. Um, yeah, this one here. So Symantis was acquired by, you know, was merged, was merged with such space to become Fortin as a company. That was the fourth number. Tali, Voket, Symantis, Fortin. Currently, the same thing is part of uh, Actimize. So the technology that I uh, just uh, discussed with you, shows you, is actually a part of this product here. Still, sorry, it still has ontology now. Uh, I still have some slides that are KYC slides that just use the same underlying technology. Anything else? Yeah. What factors does this uh, KYC consider so when you talk about an individual? When you look for an individual, what does it usually choose for? Uh, so, uh, you know, I showed you um, that uh, thing that showed terrorism and um, the things, right? So, what um, uh, government you know, after nine after nine eleven, which is two thousand one, you know the uh, airplane crashing into the uh, the U.S. government came with Patriot Law, and many other governments came with similar law. But the idea was to uh, uh, reduce the money laundering, uh, and particularly as that gets used into um, bad activities. One of the bad activities is terrorism, but that's not the only thing. Just money laundering by itself is a bad activity. So government came down, um, and uh, you know maybe in Iran uh, nuclear thing they also want, want to make sure that uh, they have sanctions on Iran, let's say, right? So they have to enforce all that. So they have to make sure that um, uh, anybody who does any activity with uh, financial institutions um, uh, are legitimate uh, using it for legitimate purpose, and that you know who that person is. So. Um, uh, for example, I mentioned the name of terrorist organization, but there are other organizations that are banned. So, uh, Bank of England has a list that they publish routinely of all the bad entities that should not be given access to legal, formal banking system. That may include all the Iran Iranian companies, as an example. That may include North Korea's... Um, you know, dictator and their you know leadership. So in the KYC, know your customer, 
you are supposed to check whether you, you open an account for an individual like for yourself or the company that you have founded. You are supposed to check that there is no direct or indirect relationship with all these bad things. So you, but what are the bad things? So you have to, in our case, is you have to create a knowledge base of all the bad things by getting Bank of England things, by getting FBI lists, by getting lists from these sources and that sources as an example. So you have to build, a, just like I showed you building ontology, you have to build ontology of financial services. And then you have to look for the connections, which is entities and relationships, which is what this cycle is doing. And then yeah, follow the money kind of stuff. Yeah. And you have to prevent the you know um, illegal people from using banking system. Kind of thing. That is what this fundamental report. Uh, of course, it is also then then they are also trying to use it to um, uh, do tax compliance. So, for example, if you are coming from India, uh, if you open a bank account, uh, you actually have to uh, do an extensive declaration. Uh, and you have to say whether you you have anything to do with US or not. You are, you know, not. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, somebody like me who is of Indian origin, um, uh, they want to make sure that if I have any um, investment in India, I declare on the US tax. Mm -hmm. And so you know they they are extending this KYC and all that thing uh, for that kind of purpose. So U.S. is reaching out to financial, you know, systems and banking in many countries. Right. Yeah. Uh, like Hussain pointed out that time, like uh, right now, if we search with the don, we want all the information related to Donald Trump. It doesn't populate all these things. So, what are the difficulties in that? Many many challenges, right? So if you if you notice what um, just some of the challenges, uh, you you know you see that um, keeping up what knowledge is relevant. So that is one challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Second is so what what should be the schema, so that I can answer the questions that he has in mind. Secondly, how do I keep to up, up to date? I gave you a couple of very solid example like this Hillary Clinton and the knowledge or NASDAQ that changes very often versus something that changes less often. So knowledge uh, changes all the time, every day, right? Just look at US election. Suppose I'm monitoring, you're monitoring US election using Twitter system that we have, mm -hmm. which also uses knowledge base. Twitter is the, one of, you know, probably the only um, semantic uh, social media you know, uh, data analysis system. And we are increasingly working on adding more semantics to Twitter's kind of thing, right? That sets it apart from other social media analysis systems. So, uh, think about election. Well, what happened? In election, we started with uh, primaries. And we had uh, 12 candidates uh, uh, for Republicans, I know, candidate, right? Then it became, you know, then there are 10 that participated, then it came down to 6, then it came down to whatever, and now Donald Trump is the leader, right? Uh, on the Democratic side, also there were some, several less than this thing, but you had uh, obviously, um, uh, um, you know, the Vermont senator and, and such, Bernie Sanders and all that. And then now it is one. Right? So that knowledge has changed. Who are the candidates has changed. Then um, um, there is, um, you know, uh, uh, just this Tuesday, there were primaries uh, where Rubio. For, you know, had contested with somebody else for that seat, and McCain had a contest, primary contest in Arizona. Again, who are the senators who are fighting? Again, that knowledge has changed before the primary, after the primary, and so on and so forth. The knowledge keeps on changing, and you keep up to date. Issues change. For example, um, what if uh, you know Donald Trump had uh, immigration? building the wall, Mexican paying the wall, and what if you change that? Then you have to keep that track of those things, right? So, um, that is a challenge. The topics of interest would be changing. The material that I am interested in gathering will change, and so on and so forth. So, it's a very dynamic system. You have to keep up with it. 
when we um, we we worked with um, um, uh, a technical team that supported Modi's election, uh, and uh, there we had to uh, in India uh, the the election was fought for 543 Lok Sabha seats constituencies. Um, so our system needed to have knowledge that there are 543 seats and that here is a geographical boundary for, of each constituency so that we know whether tweet comes from this or not and we needed to know all the main candidates you know fighting for each seat and their affiliations and so on so on and the alliances between the, you know, uh, things like Lalu and, uh, you know, uh, whatever, uh, Nitish Alliance, for example. Right? So in, in Bihar. So that knowledge has to be there for the system to behave smartly. If you don't have that knowledge, if you don't have knowledge of 50 states in the US in your system, you can never can do any election prediction because you know, it is based on electoral votes. You need to know if every state has what electoral vote and based on that you do the thing. You can't do it just based on arbitrary United States content. Right? So knowledge is very important role. Most systems don't do that, can't do that. And hence they can't help you with election prediction. Look at our we have paper of you know, for 2012 election study. It gives you a lot of interesting details about this kind of things. Um, 